Hello, um, my name is Georgia Karayani. I'm an English teacher and currently I'm serving as the head of the Department of Educational Affairs in the Directorate of Secondary Education of Kordica. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the case of uh, religious symbols uh, in school environments and uh, especially uh, I'm going to talk about the case of the Muslim veil. Freedom of thought, conscience and religion are among the rights that fall under the umbrella of the broader term of human rights and are secured by the European Convention on Human Rights. Article 9 of this convention states that every person has the right to manifest their ideology and religious beliefs either in private or in public. Manifestation of religious belief should not contradict public safety and order, morals or the freedom of others. As far as the wearing of religious apparel is concerned, and of course the Muslim veil is one of them, different approaches have been adopted by different countries. Uh, in this presentation, the Muslim veil is approached as a dynamic religious symbol and there will be an outline of how two countries, France and the United States, have confronted the issue in a different way. In France, the issue is dated back to 1989, when three Muslim girls were expelled from the public school they attended when they refused to abandon wearing a hijab during class. In 2003, the expels of students for wearing Muslim veils reached the number of 100. In 2009, the French president Nicolas Sarkozy stated in public that Burka keeps women prisoners behind a screen and deprives them of all identity. Um, in 2004, there was a legislation voted in the French Parliament according to which it is forbidden to wear signs or clothing manifesting your religious affiliation in all public schools of every grade. This is law 2004-228. In 2010, uh, another law comes to extend the content of the previously mentioned law and states that no one is allowed to conceal their face in public, in public spaces affecting in practice Muslim women who cover their faces with a burqa or need gab as it is imposed by their religion. Uh, the wearing of the Muslim veil goes against the notion of living together, which is fundamental in the French society. And of course, it is fundamental uh, in uh, French schools as well. The Islamic veil is taken as a confirmation of women's submission to men and cannot be tolerated in a country where gender equality is highly regarded and male domination is neither sought nor supported by any means. Especially in the case of the ban of the Muslim veil in the school environment, in, uh, in French, in French schools, the arguments focus mainly on the secular education, which is a priority in French schools and in many schools in the rest of Europe. Uh, school students are taught that neutrality is the best attitude when living with others and should not be feeling pressed or influenced by religious symbols. School's ultimate goal is to cultivate a sense of common identity to all students and not to make them focus on what differentiates them from others. Uh, in the USA, um, things are rather different. There, the issue of religious liberty is included for the first time in, nine, in 1789 in Section 3 of the original Constitution. There it is clearly stated that the person's religious belief does not constitute a prerequisite when applying for public office. The First Amendment's Establishment Clause seeks to prevent the establishment of any religion protecting religious freedom, and this is further supported in the Civil Rights Act in 1972. 
In a survey which was conducted in 2011 by Pew Research Center, the Muslims living in the United States stated that their life has got worse after the terrorist attack on the 11th of September 2001. People in the United States seem to have endorsed more the notion of multiculturalism, whereby the idea of the manifestation of religious preferences is perceived through different lens and is thus accepted. In the United States, there is the case of a Muslim student, Nashala Hearn, who was suspended by the school director because she was wearing a veil. But the girl's suspension was not based on the same rationale outlined in the case of the 100 students who got expelled in France due to wearing religious apparel. The school's official answer was that Hearn was expelled because she violated the school's dress code according to which headgear was prohibited. The Hearns filed a complaint against the school and in the spring of 2004 the school changed the dress code to make provisions for religious wearing which was not considered violation of the dress code, even if it, is inclu if it, if it included headgear. In 2005, there was a similar case in another school where a student named Emily Smith received a remark for her headscarf from the school director. Public school teachers are allowed to wear religious symbols under the rhetoric that the maturity of students is enough to help them distinguish between the teacher as a personality who chooses to have a specific religious preference and the teacher as a representative of the state. Concluding, it could be maintained that uh, France and USA reflect two cases where two countries share the common ground of secularism, but the perception and implementation of it in everyday life is totally diverse. In France, it is as having many small universes where one merges into the other and creates a common universe with principles everyone abides to. While in the United States, these small universes coexist, retaining their peculiarities without the one merging into the other, abiding to central principles which focus more on the citizens' duties towards the state. These are some of the references that uh, were used when writing this uh, presentation.